On Thursday, Scots will decide whether to remain part of the United Kingdom or to break away and form an independent country. Their decision comes after an extraordinary, tumultuous campaign which has energised Scotland and alarmed many in England. To discuss the issues surrounding Scottish independence referendum, I'm joined by the editor of the Financial Times, Lionel Barber, and by the FT's economics editor, Chris Giles. Lionel, if I could start with you. Um, a few months ago, the polls indicated that the Scots were very unlikely to vote for independence. And then we've seen in recent weeks this dramatic narrowing, a surge in support for the Yes campaign. What's been happening here? Why, is that, why has that occurred? The Yes campaign has what looks like a very positive message. Trust us. If we're free, we can be prosperous. Take the decision uh, and be bold. Whereas the No campaign, obviously, it's an, uh, uh, asking for a, a negative answer. And they haven't done such a good job in mm -hmm. terms of mobilizing. Uh, yes, campaign's very well funded. And I think it's fair to say that there are people in Whitehall, including at the top of the government, who were rather complacent uh, for many months. And the last factor is, frankly, that the business community hasn't spoken out, voicing its concerns about the uncertainty related to independence. Now, last week we saw a flurry of activity after a poll at the weekend showing the Yes campaign ahead. We had the Prime Minister and the other political leaders heading up to Scotland. We had business starting to speak. Do you think that'll make a difference? Do you think that could turn it around for the No campaign? I think there's been a, a, something of a halt uh, in the surge of the Yes campaign, but it's very difficult to make any solid predictions because we still have maybe up to a half a million Scots undecided. There are a population of just over five million. So still unclear. Business, though, has begun clearly to speak out about the risks involved, and that is getting attention. If we turn to the economics issues here that are involved, uh, Chris, we have Alex Salmon promising Scotland would be a highly successful independent economy, more successful than as part of the UK. We have the No campaign warning that uh, breakup risks economic disaster for Scotland. Where does truth lie? Truth lies in, in so many things, somewhere in between. We don't know it precisely, but, and nor can anyone else. There's two very important issues, I would say. One is the transition. And I don't think you can say anything other than the transition is likely to be extremely difficult as people who are concerned about the effects of breakup might well move money in quite unpredictable ways. We saw this when Greece was thinking about leaving the Eurozone in 2011 and it spread and was very contagious to the rest of the Eurozone. Then there's the long term issue of whether Scotland, if you get through this transitional process OK, uh, can be a successful economy. It can clearly be an economy on its own. There are lots of countries with five million people who have independent economies. The question is whether it's going to be a very successful one. And I think it really rests on a number of issues, a lot of which come down to the public finances. If Scotland gets the money from the oil, then its public finances look only a little bit worse than the rest of the UK's. If it doesn't get the oil, they look terrible and Scotland would have all sorts of austerity drives. So Scotland, maybe in the medium term, can run a successful economy, but the short term looks like it will have to have a lot of austerity to persuade people that it's actually a safe place where it can borrow money. Thanks, Chris. Lionel, the currency question has been absolutely central to this whole Scottish debate. Um, do you think the UK is bluffing when it says to Scotland that it can't have the, uh, a shared currency after independence? No, I don't believe that the government is bluffing, nor do I think that the governor of the Bank of England Mark Carney is bluffing. They've been very clear, Scotland cannot keep the pound. So there is huge uncertainty related to this. And as Chris was saying, apart from the pub public finances question, the issue of which, what currency will Scotland have? How do you manage a transition to a different currency? Or indeed, as Scotland says that it wants to join as a different member, as a new member of the European Union, where it would be obliged uh, to seek membership uh, of the euro and along with that come a number of responsibilities, heavy responsibilities, which it's not clear that a young uh, economy could cope with. And if we look more broadly at financial services, they're a big part of the economy in Scotland. They're also obviously critical to the UK. What would a breakup mean for the financial services industry? Well, already the major banks and a number of other financial institutions, including the major insurance company Standard Life 
have talked about moving, have, well, have said that they will move south of the border because they need predictability and they need to be operating in an environment where they are sure that the uh, bank, the central bank, is the lender of last resort. And if you're having to create a new central bank, the Bank of Scotland, uh, so to speak, uh, that position is not clear. Uh, it, it is, to, in fairness to the Yes campaign, it's not clear that a move of the headquarters as such means lots and lots of job losses, but certainly it means where the decisions are made, uh, are, it means it, it's south of the border. Uh, Chris, if I could come, come back to you, uh, do you think the economic arguments, you've talked about the pain short term for Scotland, do you think that'll win the day for the No campaign? Do you think that'll sway the Scots? I think it'll sway a lot of the Scots and we see the... Uh, from the polls, you can tell that there's a lot of people who are quiet no's. This is, the, this is what the, the no campaign is, is really hoping for. Thank you, Chris. And Lionel, a final word from you. Which way do you think it'll go on Thursday? I don't know, and I'm not in the predictions business. But what I do know for sure is that the United Com Kingdom will be a very different country. And the reason is that all the politicians in London have promised a new constitutional arrangement which will give many more devolved powers to Scotland and that will have major implications for England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Thank you Lionel and thank you Chris. Uh, on Thursday Scotland decides the polls open in the morning, they close at 10 at night and the Financial Times will be bringing you coverage around the clock on its website. You can find all our stories, our video, our analysis and our comment on ft.com Scotland.